Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and break it down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got some pretty good stories about mass adoption and banks actually catching up and getting into the cryptocurrency pitch. So first up, DeFi exchange, one inch expands to Binance Smart Chain, citing ETH gas fees. And this goes in direct correlation with what we talked about yesterday. We talked about how I am stopping the DCAing of Ethereum and going all in on Cardano. On top of that, we're going to take a look at one of the largest banks in Switzerland is rolling out crypto trading services, as well as a large Germany bank, Solaris Bank, is launching licensed crypto brokerage. So again, this is uh, kind of makes me flabbergasted to see that banks getting so much into cryptocurrency and digital assets, but hey, here they are. So we'll go over those two things, but first take a look at what's going on in the market. So today it is uh, uh, February 26th, 8.30 in the morning, getting things done early. Let's see what we got as far as the market. So Bitcoin continues to drop a little bit over the last 24 hours, looking at 9% loss. And we're looking at 46,488. Again, yeah, hopefully we can close uh, at 45 or above, but uh, I've got a bad feeling that uh, maybe we will go down. And again, if I was a, a big trader, I'd be worried, but I'm, I'm not. I'm just an investor. So if it goes up, it goes down. I still believe that Bitcoin hits 150K uh, this year. It's only a matter of time. Uh, Ethereum also continues its slide, uh, 7% down, 1508. Cardano is, is up, and it's one of the few that are actually up at 5%. And this is something that um, really goes with what we talked about yesterday as far as Cardano and uh, the hard fork where they are uh, getting into the golden era, Mary, and uh, getting into NFTs, decentralized finance, and all those great things. There's a great video we did yesterday on top of Satoshi's video, which I'll link at the very end as well. And uh, this is, again, what I was talking about before. So I think it's going to be a pretty great year for Cardano. And this is just the information we have right now. I'll get to that more about that in a second. So uh, we've got those three things going on. Binance Coin is still slipping, which is kind of surprising, but in over one hour, like 0.79, but still it's at down 12%. But it had a massive run. You have to remember that it was at 226. I think it almost, uh, it was above 280 at one point. And we... Uh, just a couple of weeks ago, I believe it was a below 100. So, I mean, it rocketed all the way to that fourth position. It overtook XRP, it overtook Tether, it overtook Polkadot, uh, overtook everything. And now it's sitting, you know, pretty firmly where it's at right now. Uh, Polkadot's up a little bit. Uh, sure. Uh, XRP, watch out, down a little bit. But I mean, again, everything is down. What is this one? <laughs> Dogecoin. Dogecoin, I, some people have still talked to me and said, oh, it's going to a dollar. And I'm just going to hear to tell you it's not. So uh, what else we got? Nothing really, nothing really. Let's take a look at the sentiment. Actually, no, let's keep going. Let's keep going down. We never go down. People complain, you never go down far enough. Okay, sure. Uh, Voyager token, one of my faves, down to uh, 3%, but still it's above $6. It uh, topped out at $7. I'm still pretty happy with that. Um, urine finance, sure. 1.3, anything really fantastic. Matic, again, layer two solution, uh, sure. Ah, there are Ashcraft. Yeah, I guess. Uh, honestly, it's not really interesting to me. Let's take a look at this projected range. Let's see what's going to happen in the next hour or so. This is what I like about Trade the Chain, uh, sentiment analysis. So, ooh, Ion? Aeon. It could go up 15% in the next hour. And it looks like it's going to go up 7% in the next hour based on their 90% accuracy. So maybe you might want to take a look at that. I'm not a trader. I do a little bit. I actually might take a look at this. Reserve right. We've covered that before. I've made a little money on that as far as uh, trading. So yeah. Dent? Still up, man, dent, 11% in the next hour. Definitely take a look at that. 12% for Matic. This is the great thing about uh, Trade the Chain. If you want to take a look at it, it's in the description. But let's jump into today's top story before I lose my mind with all the <laughs> different uh, increases that could potentially happen, shall we? All right. So this story caught my eye because, again, it goes into, it's a correlation what we talked about yesterday as far as uh, Ethereum versus Cardano. Again, I will continue to hold both. I don't know which one's going to be awesome and which one's going to be super awesome, but uh, who knows? But uh, I will hedge my bet and uh, have both of those. But I will not be dollar cost averaging any more Ethereum for a bit. I'll just be putting a lot more uh, into Cardano. So this is what's happening. This is very short and sweet. Uh, one inch is a decentralized finance or a DeFi protocol for routing trades, uh, is now live on the Binance Smart Chain. So just like with Uniswap, which uses only uh, Ethereum uh, tokens, gas, and all that stuff, which is super expensive. Now, I can't even use it. It just becomes unusable. Uh, now, one inch got the hint and like, you know what? Uh, we're out. We're not going to use so much ERC. I mean, we're still going to use it, 
but we want to be uh, hooked up to that uh, Binance Smart Chain because the fees are so much less and that's what people want. So it's a very simple thing, right? You have customers, they want something and you give them that something. It's very simple. And I don't know why uh, it's so hard, but uh, this is exactly what Wanish has done and uh, bravo to them. It's hedging its bets on Ethereum's ability to handle more transaction volume. That's true. Now, for all the Ethereum lovers, I love Ethereum too, uh, but you have to take a look at what's going on today and you know, be like, well, you know, maybe in you know six months or a year, it might be better, or maybe three, I don't know, maybe two months. I have no idea, but, but right now, this is what we got. So why would you do it? You know, if you have, like I said yesterday, if you got a dentist down the street who's charging half, or you got a dentist 30 miles away who's doubling up on the, on the cost of a tooth extraction, which one would you go to? Yes, we'll go with that one. Anyhow, the one inch token on Binance Smart Chain will be used for a bridge between the Binance and Ethereum networks. Great. So, you know, you can have the one inch token, you can bridge between the two. One inch users will get access to Pancake Swap, Burger Swap, Street Swap, Venus, Stable Swap, Jewel Swap, Bakery Swap, and other Binance DEXs and lending protocols. So, if you're into that type of thing, great. Uh, my big thing is just to try, try to find Celsius. I try to find it uh, to where it's not so damn expensive. So maybe I'll check this out, uh, especially with one inch, because I can't get Binance coin. I am in Texas, so I can't use Binance or Binance US. So kind of screwed there. But uh, what are you going to do? And uh, this just is in correlation with what we talked about yesterday. You know, Bi uh, Binance. Cardano uh, came out and, you know, with that hard fork of Mary, and not only did they, they say it's going to be done the end of uh, February, they came out and said, okay, no, it's a, we're going to be, a, we're going to do a hard time frame of March 1st, and it's actually going to happen. And that makes me happy as an investor because they, you know, they say they're going to do something and they do it. So we'll see if it comes to pass. But like I said, they've been hitting all their milestones so far. So I'm very happy with what's going on there. And especially with like, uh, you know, with, with DeFi and NFTs and smart contracts, and then people being actually build on it as far as dApps. And then my man Hashoshi talking about, he's a, he's a developer and he says, hey, uh, it's easy, especially with this Haskell language and then uh, all the different things they're doing. Uh, it's It seems to be pretty well. And they're supposed to keep their prices low because that's what Cardano was built for, right? First generation blockchain, block, uh, car Bitcoin, second generation, uh, Ethereum, third generation, Cardano. This is what it's built for. So we'll see what all comes to fruition. And again, I will just say this. This is just the information that I have right now. I don't know what's going to happen in six months from now. I don't even know what's going to happen tomorrow. I'm not Nostradamus. I'm definitely not a financial advisor. So if I get information tomorrow that Ethereum has been accepted by the U.S. government and they're going to use that for their currency, and they're going to have all the developers come on. Oh, and the fees went down to almost nothing. Yeah, I will probably buy a little bit more Ethereum. Hopefully, I'll get that information before it breaks, but it's probably not. So I'm just going with the information I have right now. And the information I have right now is that Ethereum is slow. Ethereum is expensive. There's a lot of people building on it, but it is super congested. And then that's where we're at right now. I'm not going to sell any Ethereum. I just sold uh, Ethereum a little bit ago, not because I was worried about the price dropping, but because I had a plan in place, an exit strategy. And as soon as I hit 2000, I sold a position and uh, it just kind of worked out that that was the top. Uh, I honestly, it's just luck. It's not like, oh, you know, I, I, I made this fantastic play. No, it was just, it was set in stone months ago and that just kind of worked out. So uh, again, if I hear other information, I will definitely let you know. And that's why uh, hopefully you can subscribe because a lot of things we talk about are time sensitive. So just think about that. All right. So that's it for that piece. Let's get on to the bank stuff, huh? All right. So the banks, the banks, uh, there's two banks, one in Switzerland, one in Germany, and they're starting to get into crypto. What's going on? So this first one, it's called Border and CSCMA, one of Switzerland's oldest bank institution now provides crypto trading services. That's the whole story. Really, that's it. Um, we'll, we'll go in a little bit depth, but uh, just know that banks aren't known for much innovation, as you can probably tell. You know, just go to any bank, even mine. Uh, but when they get into something like this, this is big. And they've actually moved quite fast. And there was an article uh, rolled out by Alex Maschioli. And this was, uh, this was a months ago uh, when uh, Brian Brooks, the OCC, had said that banks would be allowed to custody. And he's like, they're not going to jump into that. And they didn't for a while, but I mean, here we are. So uh, Bordier, Bordier, Bordier says it's partnering with Signum Bank to incorporate its B2B business to business banking platform into the firm's infrastructure. This allows Bordier clients to buy, hold, and trade crypto assets on an execution only basis, which means that Signum will only provide a platform for trading and storing crypto and will not 
offer financial advice to clients. That's great because they give bad advice anyhow. I mean, if you look at JP Morgan, they just came out and said, hey, maybe you guys should put in 1% into your portfolio. And you're like, geez, thanks. Wish that would have, you would have told us that about that, I don't know, three years ago. Anyhow. So, uh, Bordier, this was interesting. Bordier currently supports Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Bitcoin Cash and Tezos. Which, when I was reading this, I thought it was just going to be Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, and Litecoin, just the same as PayPal. But the last one for Litecoin was switched with Tezos. And I'm wondering, is it because of the smart contract functionality, or why did they pick that one? That would be an interesting topic to talk about. Maybe I'll get somebody from the bank to come on the show. <laughs> Doubt it. Uh, and to finish up, it says, we have seen increasing demand from our clients to diversify. Oh, sorry. This is why this is done. This wasn't done because they're like, this is a good idea. This is just goes back to what I was talking about. You have clients and these clients want something and you give them that thing. It's a, it's a simple, like I said, very simple thing. This is what the bank did and said, hey, you guys want crypto? We'll make it happen. And they have crypto. And that's pretty much the whole statement right there. So on top of this one, uh, you also have uh, Germany's Solaris Bank launches licensed crypto brokerage. Now, this to me is a better business model. It's a just a be better business model for, for retail and even institutions as well. So German fintech firm Solaris Bank is building on its regulated crypto custody service with a brokerage and trading API. See, they've already moved into the custody service, which is great for them. And they knew if we can get into custody and we can figure out you know, the regulations for that, we can roll out some other type of product, buy, trading, and selling, or just like a broker model, uh, like what Voyager has, or like what Swissborg has. And let me tell you, um, Voyager is doing pretty good and Swissborg is doing really good. I am going to have uh, Alex, uh, CEO of Swissborg on next week. And I'm going to talk to him about this whole broker model and how it's working out pretty great in Europe. And I, and I was actually thinking about this today. I was thinking out loud. I thought, you know what? You know, 2017 was like the year of the ICO. Tons of ICOs, right? And then 2018 was just a huge dip. And 2019 was the year of the reset. And 2020 was like the whole halving thing. I'm starting to think that 2021, which was supposed to be the year of DeFi, and I think it still it still is really, it, it could be the year of the DeFi, NFT, and utility tokens or brokerage tokens because you see things like Binance Coin going crazy, uh, OKB, um, Huobi token, uh, Voyager token, Swissborg is is making moves, and now we have another broker who's you know coming in. Now, get, granted, they they may or may not be a token, but I just thought to myself, I'm like, you know, the big winners right now are really like the tokens that actually do stuff like a utility token. Just food for thought. Anyhow, Solaris Bank, which provides Samsung, among other companies, with a range of APIs for digital banking and payments, announced Thursday it will offer fiat to crypto trading and instant settlement from within its custody solution. So these guys already know what's going on. They already uh, have Samsung and a ton of other companies as far as API integration. So like, let's just do crypto. And sure enough, they are. And then lastly, it states uh, custody is the first step into crypto for large regulated firms which has been happening recently with the likes of BNY Mellon and Standard Charter making announcements. And this last comment is a couple of things, made me think, because you know you have BNY Mellon, which is the oldest bank in America. They said, you know what? We're gonna start with custody. We can custody crypto, no big deal. And for a lot of people, some people say, oh, you shouldn't custody help the bank's custody because they're evil and blah, blah, blah. Well, look, not everybody's like us, right? Nobody's like me, nobody's like you, and they wanna go and figure out a ledger or a Tezor and sit down and, and uh, you know, hopefully write down the mnemonic phrase and not lose it and then deal with, you know, the five kids and the two jobs and the social life and everything else. Like, you know what? I don't care. Somebody do this for me and let me get in the game. Great. Have BNY Mellon do it or other banks do it. I'm okay with that. It's fine. But if you look at what this article has talked about, I said, look, BNY Mellon's getting into it. Uh, the German bank, Swiss, Swiss bank. I think as we start to see more banks just put their toes in the water and they say, hey, let's do a little custody. Now let's do a little trading. Let's do a little brokerage. And before you know it, um, the banks, which I thought were going to get blockbustered, come around. They got a whole new bag. They got a whole new uh, repertoire of what they could actually do. And uh, it just makes sense for them because, look, we're moving this way. Unless they like it or not, these are the things uh, that are going to move everything forward. And if you're not involved right now, I think it's a mistake. So you watching this video right now, you are super early. And I've always said this, people say, oh, I'm late. You're not late. Go on the street and talk to anybody. Do you know what Bitcoin is? Yeah, some will probably say yes. Do you know what Ethereum is? Do you know what Cardano is? Do you know what XRP is? Do you know what Tomato Coin is? They have no idea what you're talking about, especially Tomato Coin. So like, 
to talk about this and these banks just getting in here, you are super early. Can you imagine what it's gonna be like in five years? <laughs> I don't know either. Anyhow, uh, that's it for today. So, hey, if you made it all the way to the end, thanks for watching, I appreciate it. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Also, a lot of things we uh, talk about are time sensitive, so hit the subscribe button, I'll let you know what's going on. And uh, also I'll link two more videos on the left and right so you can uh, watch uh, something that you might be interested in. All right, that's it for today. Thanks so much. See you on the next one.